before we get to 2020. Kia ora. The Honourable Scott Simpson. Mr Speaker, it's uh, a privilege to take a call in this general debate and normally uh, um, I have some degree of admiration for the member that's just resumed her seat from New Zealand first. Normally she's well briefed, well on top of her case, but today, I'm sorry, she really wasn't. She was completely off the boil. And maybe it's because, Mr Speaker, there are things afoot amongst the coalition government at the moment that they don't really want anyone to be talking about. And if I was a conspiracy theorist, I'd be saying that all the beleaguered aggro that's going on with the uh, Minister of Immigration is all part of a smokescreen and a deliberate ploy to stop him talking about his other portfolio responsibility as Workplace Relations and Safety Minister. Because Ian Lees Galloway has been charged with guiding through this parliament the opportunity to the new government to repay its political debt to the trade union movement. And they thought that when they introduced the uh, workplace uh, uh, relations uh, uh, changes back in January of this year, they thought that it would be plain sailing. And they thought, aha, here we go. There's our opportunity to increase union membership, to give unions more power, to make them uh, a bigger player in industrial relations in this country. And it hasn't quite worked out the way they thought. And it now seems, after a cabinet meeting on Monday, that changes are afoot and that the bill as reported back from select committee is going to be significantly and radically changed. Watered down, flip-flop back, back down. And we knew that some of this was coming because a few weeks ago, members of senior members of the trade union movement decided to have a flick, indeed actually to launch a full frontal missile attack on Winston Peters and the New Zealand First Party. And those leaders, Richard Wagstaff and uh, um, a fellow by the name of Robert Reid from First Union, they decided to have an attack on Winston Peters because they saw him as having a, had a play in this industrial relations legislation in a way that was going to water down the union-friendly uh, pro-union uh, changes that the new government wanted to introduce. Well, I think, actually, it's a question of New Zealand First having listened, just like the government is having to listen to. Listening to the opposition that the National Party has put forward on this bill at every inch of the way, at every turn, at every corner, we have opposed it, and we've opposed it on the basis that it is fundamentally and absolutely wrong in terms of growing the New Zealand economy, of creating better workplace opportunities for New Zealand workers, that it's bad for employees and it's bad for employers. But I think that the New Zealand First Party has actually decided to listen to what uh, the National Party has been saying. They've listened to business, they've listened to the EMA, they've listened to Business New Zealand, they've listened to the Chambers of Commerce and their submissions, because at Select Committee, all those organisations made very staunch and strong submissions about how bad this piece of legislation was going to be. That it was going to take us back to the militant trade union uh, uh, scenario and landscape that we had back in the 1970s. And every indication we have had this year, the last 12 months, has been that that's exactly the course upon which the trade union movement wishes to take New Zealand uh, at the moment. In fact, it's fair to say, Mr Speaker, that in my opinion, when this bill comes back to the House, probably in the last sitting block just before Christmas, when the public's attention is diverted away from it, that we will see a significant back down uh, in terms of the promises, the big promises that the Labour Party made to their trade union friends, and they will have to um, uh, swallow a very significant dead rat. And uh, I think we're on the eve of seeing uh, an embarrassing and humiliating back down from the government in terms of the promises they've made to trade unions. And why is this important? Well, it's important because this is a government that relies on the leveraging of New Zealand First in order to get any legislation passed. And when Winston Peters said a few weeks ago that this was, quote, a work in progress, we all know around this parliament that that is Winston Peters' speak for, I'm going to have a fiddle. I'm going to have a play, I want to use it as a branding exercise. And so that's exactly what I think is going to occur. And when the CTU president, Richard Wagstaff, says, quote, we're incredibly disappointed by New Zealand First's attempts to duck the commitment they made, you know, we know, Mr Speaker, not you, we know that in fact that that is a concession from the trade unions that they've heard from the Labour Party, we're not going to be able to deliver on everything we promised to you. Winston Peters has decided to have a play 
has decided to have a fiddle, and we can just hope that the worst, sharpest aspects of this have been softened by New Zealand First and their input. And you are on Clark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um